Okay, so now let's deal with uh, quotients. So we want to basically, ultimately we want to show that if you have two sequences, Sn and Tn, and you take Sn over Tn, provided that Tn doesn't uh, converge to zero or have any terms that are zero, then Sn over Tn will converge to S over T, where S and T are the limits of Sn and Tn, right? Now, instead of uh, just doing it directly immediately, um, we can simplify things a little bit just by considering a single sequence Sn and showing that one over Sn will converge to one over S because we already have the product theorem. So then we can basically say that, well, Sn over Tn is the same thing as Sn times one over Tn. And we can use the reciprocal and the product theorems together to argue that that um, converges to S over T. So let's start with uh, what they call lemma 9.5 in the book, which is um, if Sn converges to S and Sn are not equal to zero for all n and um, S is not equal to zero, then one over Sn converges to one over S, okay? So now as usual, um, the first thing we kind of want to do is think about like what the end of this looks like, right? In the end, what we're trying to do is um, control the error between one over Sn and one over S by controlling the error between Sn and S, right? So the thing about that is that if S itself, or if the values Sn, if either of those two things be, are like small, if they become, the smaller they get, then the worse the errors between these things get because the, these will blow up really big, right? So even small errors between Sn and S become huge if the actual values Sn and S are very small themselves, right? So we have to basically exploit the fact that the limit is not equal to zero, which lets us put a lower bound. It, there, there's sort of a limit to how small these things can get, right? Sn can't become arbitrarily small because it has to actually be approaching a non-zero number. So we have to basically put a lower bound on the absolute values of Sn, and that will let us control how big these errors get. So let's kind of like set up the scratch work here. So we're looking at one over Sn minus one over S, right? We want this to be less than epsilon in the end. So if you uh, combine these things, you'll get Sn minus S over Sn, absolute value of Sn, absolute value of S. Um, and so this is kind of promising because on the top, we recognize something that we can, we instantly know how to control, right? In terms of, um, in terms of uh, Sn, right? By just by controlling Sn, make, forcing Sn to be close to S, we can just directly control this quantity up here. So the key is we want to make sure that this doesn't get too small. And this is just a constant. So that's actually also not a problem. So really it's the only, the only sort of tricky thing is just this absolute value of Sn down here, right? Um, so, uh, so this equals this. So we can, let's see. So if you remember uh, in a previous lecture, I believe it was lecture two. Uh, we actually, or no, sorry, lecture three actually. We showed that um, if a sequence uh, converges to zero, then, or sorry, if a sequence converges to a non-zero number and none of the terms are zero, then there's the, the infimum of the uh, absolute values of the terms in the sequence is greater than zero, right? So by a previous example, uh, the infimum of the set of absolute values of Sn is strictly greater, emphasis on strictly uh, greater than zero. So let's actually give that a name. So the idea is that Sn oops, is greater than or equal to m greater than zero for all n, right? So now what we can say is Sn minus S over Sn S is 
less than or equal to, right? Remember, because taking reciprocals reverses the direction of inequalities. Sn minus s over ms, right? So now we just have two constants down here, which is really nice because then uh, we can just say, so we can force Sn minus s to be less than epsilon m s, right? Just a constant. Uh, and that will force this quantity to be less than epsilon, which will then in turn force this quantity to be less than epsilon, which is what we want. So the proof here is um, let epsilon be greater than zero. Then, um, so like we said, by a previous example, the infimum of the absolute values of Sn is greater than zero, call it M, right? Then, uh, then um, because Sn converges to S, there exists a capital N such that for all little n greater than capital N, um, we have, uh, for all little, little n greater than capital N, we have Sn minus S is less than epsilon m absolute value of S. So for all little n greater than capital N, one over Sn minus one over S is equal to Sn minus S over Sn S, which is less than or equal to um, epsilon, or well, strictly less than, sorry, epsilon m s over m s, which is just epsilon, and we're done. All right, <clears throat> or square, if you prefer. So, um, Let's see. So now, uh, let's um, let me just return to the idea uh, I was saying before about taking general quotients, right? So <clears throat> now that we have this lemma, which I'm going to leave up here, but we'll take it as being proved now, right? Now that we have this. Sorry, takes a little bit of time to erase here. Okay, so now that we have this, we can just go ahead and prove, I believe it's theorem 9.6, yes. If, actually they use T as the numerator, so let's do that. TN approaches T, SN approaches S, Sn are not equal to zero. S is not equal to zero. This is for all n, of course. <clears throat> then Tn over Sn approaches T over S. Uh, here's the proof. Tn over Sn equals Tn 1 over Sn, right? Uh, by 9 point five, one over Sn converges to one over S. So by nine point four, it was the product theorem. Yeah, nine point four. Tn one over Sn approaches T times one over S. So, I mean, that's it, right? So uh, there you have it. <clears throat> um, that's the quotients. And uh, next we'll talk about um, some specific examples of limits for special types of sequences, um, which are actually important. They're not just examples, but they're sort of um, 
certain types of sequences that we want to be able to just quickly analyze. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll talk about um, sequences that diverge to plus or minus infinity and how to handle infinities in these uh, expressions.